Well, good evening folks and welcome to another fish talk video. Not a fishing video as such this time, but uh, I'm going to show you how I fillet redfin for the table. Now, the way I do it might not be the way you do it or other people do it, but it works for me. After hundreds, maybe thousands of redfin fillets, this is the method that I like the best. So thank okay, you. Okay, so the first part in the process of filleting redfin for me anyway, and I stress that this is the way I do it. Other people will have their own methods and their own ways of doing this job. I put a lot of faith in my filleting board. It's my third hand and I love it. So the first thing I do is remove the fillets off both sides. Now once I've done that, I usually just cut straight up to this first set of fins here. And then... Uh, cut through behind that fin and on an angle into the spine so uh, basically that's it there you can see that then I cut down along the spine taking everything off and that's one fillet now, when I do these fillets, and there's quite a few here, I'll show you in a minute. Once I've taken each of the fillets off, each of the fish, they're going to go back into the fridge overnight. And I'll do the rest of the, of the filleting tomorrow. The reason for doing that is because it seems to firm the flesh up on the red fin making it really easier, so much easier, to skin them, to take the skin off, and to take the rib cage out. Because once those two jobs are done, you've pretty well got a boneless fillet, apart from a little line of bones that runs through the top of the rib cage there, and we can get them out later. So basically that's it. Carcass goes away. Put it in your garden, or do whatever you like with it really. Fish will now uh, go into the fridge when I'm finished the rest and they'll just sit in a bowl overnight to, and uh, they will firm up. They will firm up and it'll just make taking those rib cages out all the easier. Take the uh, redfin fillets out of the fridge, have them in the fridge overnight because the, fe the flesh firms up nicely that way. And then uh, take the rib cages out before you take the skin off them. So nice, sharp, flexible fillet knife, of course, is the uh, best idea of the lot. Rib cage out like that. Okay. Then I uh, set it up in there because the fillet board helps to hold things for you. Redfin skins are very, very tough, so they're pretty easy to remove from the rest of the fillet. Okay, there's the skin gone. Pretty easy, there is a redfin fillet. Now there's just one final thing. There is a small line of very fine bones, it runs back to about that point there so uh, generally I just take that line out like that so really that's that's all the flesh that I've lost off that little fillet plus a tiniest little amount of flesh that might be still connected to the rib cage then it's just a matter of a quick tidy up of the edges and there's one fillet ready to go into the pan or ready to go into the freezer everything will be fine and quite honestly if you run your fingers along there where the top of the uh, rib cage was you'll feel this little line of insignificant bones and you can remove it now you probably don't have to remove those bones but uh, if you want to serve these up to people who don't like the idea of uh, of copying a uh, bone when they're eating fish. This is the best way to do it. 
So there's a couple of little fillets there. Nice eating size ones. Here's one off a, a bigger red fin. I always take the fillets off behind the uh, the fins, the front fins. You're not losing much. Okay, again, get in. What you're actually doing is you're cutting through some horizontal bones, and they're the ones you take out with that V. So, uh, if they come by leaving the skin on, it makes that part of the job so much easier because uh, you don't lose as much flesh. Straight in under there. Cut with it. Feel it comes away from the skin quite easy. Turn him over and find that line of uh, vertical bones. It will be in the same position on every fish. The only difference of course will be with the size of the fish as to how much of that you need to remove. If you've got a cat, they love these little bits. Feed them to the cat. Um, and that is the finished product. So there you go folks. There's three redfin fillets prepared. And there folks would be, for me anyway, more than an adequate meal. Basically what I've got there is uh, one medium sized redfin and one small redfin. Fill it up, ready for breadcrumbs or beer batter, or just plain in the pan. Beautiful tucker. Now for people who are wondering whether it's worth it to fillet small fish, here's a small one. This is a very small redfin fillet, as you can see, by my hands. Tiny, actually. So what I'm gonna turn this into is basically a fish finger. You use the same method. Because it's firmed up overnight, it's still very, very easy to remove the uh, rib cage, like such. Take it and put it into the fillet board. Take the skin off. And again, I'm probably a bit fussy, but I still like to remove the uh, little V of bones, even though they're tiny and would probably cook out. But there, if I was to take that off there, and I sometimes do this, I'll just show you. I just cut it down there and keep myself a strip of flesh like that, coat it up with breadcrumbs. It's uh, like the nicest fish fingers you could ever taste. So don't always disregard the little red fin. They too make tasting morsels. And in, as a matter of fact, it's my belief and, I, and my whole family's belief that the smaller they are, the sweeter they are. So thank you for watching and uh, please remember if you hit that subscribe button there and the little notification bell off to the side, you'll get uh, all of the videos from Fish Talk Video in the near future.